Chag Sameach, and happy Passover to you and to your family. I hope that uh, you are sitting down to your table and prepared to celebrate the Festival of Redemption, the Feast of Redemption, Passover. You know, Passover is a very important holiday uh, to us. It reminds us of the outgoing of the Jewish people from the land of Egypt, and it kind of helps us to uh, remember who God is, uh, that he is the Redeemer. In fact, after the Passover, uh, certainly our people have always understood in the Bible and in post-biblical Jewish literature, have always understood God as the Redeemer of Israel. And it all comes back to the Passover. Uh, and so uh, today we're going to be celebrating Passover, as you can see on my table. I have a Seder plate, and we have our matzah tosh, we have matzah, we have wine, we have our candles, uh, we have a Haggadah, okay? We're using the Messianic Jewish Passover Haggadah uh, that uh, is published by Messianic Literature Outreach. And, uh, and so it's a, an excellent little tool, and if you have any Haggadah, that will work if you have a traditional one, or even if you don't have one at all, uh, you can follow along uh, with me. We'll go nice and slow so that we can all celebrate Passover together. Uh, just think of me as uh, an invited guest <laughs> at your home for the Seder. Now, of course, a lot of preparation goes into the celebration of Passover, and I know that uh, you all know that because you're at home and and uh, you've been preparing, perhaps cooking a, a big festive meal, or uh, perhaps uh, you've uh, this year maybe ordered it out, uh, you know, uh, uh, a very nice uh, Passover meal so that you don't have to cook. Some people I know are doing that. Uh, and, of course, we clean out the house from all of the leaven, all of the leavened bread. And that's a, uh, an ancient custom and tradition that we have at Passover uh, that we don't eat leavened bread. And of course, uh, for most of us, we eat food that is called kosher for Passover. That means that it's overseen by a rabbinical council. But the main thing is, is that we're not eating bread. We're not eating yeast. Uh, and of course, that comes from the scriptures, comes from the Torah. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Exodus, uh, in Shemot, that uh, we are to eat uh, unleavened bread, um, bitter herbs, and uh, Pesach, and uh, the lamb. And we're going to talk all about that. But you know, the cleaning out of the uh, leaven from the house is a very important aspect of the Seder. And we'll be mentioning some spiritual um, meaning to that a little bit later on. But right now, it just brings back a great memory for me that I thought I would share with you. And that is when I was a child growing up, in Hebrew school, we would get a spoon, a little wooden spoon. For some reason, it was wooden, uh, and uh, uh, and a feather. And then uh, before Passover, we would go through the house searching for the chametz, as we would call it, searching for the leaven. And my mother used to put out breadcrumbs. Uh, she'd hide breadcrumbs in different places in the house so that I could find it, and we would throw it away so that we could say that the house has been cleansed from leaven. And then, of course, we want to set up our table in a certain way. We have uh, some elements on our table that we don't usually have uh, in other times of year. For example, we have a Seder plate. Uh, so I have two Seder plates here, one so that you can see it uh, a little bit here, this Seder plate. In fact, I'll hold it up for just a second. This is a Seder plate. And then we have another Seder plate uh, on our table uh, that has all the, the ritual foods that we eat or talk about at Passover. Uh, and so uh, we have uh, an egg, a roasted egg. Uh, we have, uh, that's the betza. Uh, we have um, charosis, which is a sweet mixture made of... Uh, apples and walnuts and honey and maybe some wine, uh, some cinnamon, some people add raisins. Uh, it's a pasty uh, mixture that's very sweet. We have our carpas, uh, which is uh, greens. Uh, we use parsley for that. 
Uh, we have the Zroa. We have the shank bone of a lamb. Uh, we have a Maror. We have our horseradish that, that we use for, the, for a bitter herb. And then something called Chazeret, which is another green vegetable, and we use uh, lettuce for that. We have a piece of matzah right in the middle. And I've come to understand, you know, over the years that there have been, over the centuries, different traditions of actually what goes on a Seder plate. Uh, there are some uh, uh, Seder plates uh, that don't have a second green vegetable, and we use uh, salt water there. Uh, others use a piece of matzah uh, to make the, all of the, uh, the, the six elements on our Seder plate. But this is our tradition. And you know, uh, I will tell you that there is never just one Jewish tradition uh, about uh, Passover uh, or about many things. It depends on what shtetl in Europe your parents, great parents, grandparents, great grandparents, great great grandparents came from, uh, and uh, what teacher they sat under, uh, how you do all of our traditions. Even some of the pronunciations of Yiddish. Uh, sayings are a little bit different depending on where you come from. But that's what makes it uh, all so interesting. So I'm using really the family traditions that I grew up with of what's on a Seder plate. And if yours are a tiny bit different, well, I guess that's okay too. But these are the basic elements, I think, that people have on a Seder plate. Also on our table, we have a matzah tosh, a matzah bag, which we'll be uh, pointing to in a little while. Uh, and it has three compartments for uh, three pieces of matzah. We have a whole plate of, of matzah on our table uh, for us to have uh, during dinner uh, as a bread substitute. Uh, but we will be using matzah, of course, during the first part of our Seder as well. But we have a three-tiered matzah bag. Uh, and if you're at home and you don't have uh, a Seder plate, or you don't have a matzah bag, that's okay. Just take a plate and put the elements on it. Uh, and, or if you ha don't have a matzah bag, just take a plate, a piece of matzah, an open napkin, another piece of matzah, an open napkin, another piece of matzah, and a napkin. Then you have your uh, three-tiered matzah tosh, uh, and that's just fine. We have some other elements on our Seder plate as well. We have a bowl of salt water. Uh, we have a cup for Elijah. And we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about that. And so I think uh, we are just about ready to begin. Now, uh, what we do at our Seder, uh, we always like to begin the Seder by lighting candles, reminding us of the presence of God you know, in our midst, it reminds us of the Messiah, the, the light of the the light of the world. So we're going to light our candles, and if there is a lady at your house, uh, perhaps the lady of the house uh, might light uh, candles that you have on your table. If you don't, it's okay. But we light the candles again, reminding us of the presence of God. Uh, and, of course, of the Messiah, the light of the world. And so if you're using our Haggadah, it's on page 2, uh, and uh, I will sing the prayer nice and slow so that you can join in. Okay? Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddush Anu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu lehadlik ner shel yom tov. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy in your commandments and who has commanded us to kindle the festival lights. And then we have in our Haggadah, as a woman begins the Seder and brings light to the table, so let us remember that the Lord used a woman to bring forth our Messiah, the light of the world. And so the light is shed on our table of redemption. Now, it's interesting that the Passover 
uh, can be gauged by four cups that we take. There's a particular symmetry, we might say, to the Passover Seder. Uh, and it has to do with the foods that we eat, when we eat them, and, and some of the prayers that we say. But at the Passover Seder, we drink out of a cup four times with four particular remembrances. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, uh, other uh, times when we can drink our wine or grape juice. You can drink, it depends on how much wine or grape juice you have. If you have a, you know, a, a, a lifetime supply there, you can drink up and refill your cup uh, and refill your cup or just take a sip. That's up to you. But anyway, in Leviticus, or I'm sorry, in Exodus chapter 6, in Exodus chapter 6, beginning in verse 6, we read what God told Moses what he would do uh, in bringing the Jewish people out of Egypt. Uh, and so uh, we read here, Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Then I will take you for my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. And so we see here that God is the subject. God is the one who does the work, and we're called to be the receivers. God says, this is what I will do. And this is what we're remembering at the Passover, what God says he will do. And of course, as we remember uh, what God did for us when he brought us by the hand and led us out of the land of Egypt, we can remember it throughout the ages and remember it to this day. For we could say that the goal of the Seder is for us to relive our redemption so that we know and realize that just as God was alive then and brought redemption, God is alive now and brings redemption. Our people have been through some very, very dark times uh, in, in history. But throughout it all, we have this remembrance of these I wills. God will indeed be faithful. Uh, he is uh, the Lord. Uh, and he never changes. Uh, and so at the Seder, by the foods that we eat, by the smells that we have, by what we hear, by what we see, by what we say, using our senses, we're able to really remember it. And we remember it communally. And you know, I, I know that we are not all together. Uh, you're in your home and I'm right here. But you know what? That very first Passover Seder, the Egyptian Passover Seder. There was not a big communal Seder. People were in their homes. Uh, and so we're, we're remembering that today by all being uh, at home. And that is the tradition, by the way, that we celebrate Passover with our, with our families. And so we're celebrating Passover uh, together uh, now. All right. I, and so uh, we read on page three, uh, in our uh, Haggadah, God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. Now let's all say together, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not make myself known to them by my name, yud heh vav -Hey. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan the land in which they lived as sojourners. I have now heard the moaning of the Israelites, because the Egyptians are holding them in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the Israelite people, I am the Lord. I will free you from the labors of the Egyptians and deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and through extraordinary chastisements. And I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, 
And you will know that I, the Lord, am your God who freed you from the labors of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. And so let's lift up our cup. Now, I'll give you a few moments. If you haven't poured the wine into the cups, you'll want to do that right now, okay? So make sure that you pour your wine or grape juice or whatever you're using into a cup. Very good. And now you want to lift up that, that cup. And now on page four, let's all say uh, together the prayer, the traditional prayer over the cup, the Kiddush. Kiddush is a Hebrew word uh, which comes from the word kadash, which means to be holy or separated unto God. So when we lift up the Kiddush cup at the beginning of the Seder, we're being reminded of who we are, that we are a separated people, that we belong to God with a particular calling. Whether this uh, was back in Egypt, in the wilderness wanderings, uh, in the first temple period, the second temple period, uh, or today, we are a called people. God has called us to be a light to the world, uh, to have an ethic and a moral that reflects the, the character of God as found in the Torah and, and uh, in the Brit Hadashah as well. Uh, and so we lift up our cup, reminding us who we are uh, and that this is a separated or holy time unto God. It reminds us of that first I will. I will bring you out from the land of Egypt. God separating us from that slavery under Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Together? Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei pri hagafen Amen. In English, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And if we have not celebrated Passover yet, uh, this year we say the Shehechianu, which we always say at the beginning of a holiday. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shehechianu Vakiyamanu Vahigianu Lazman Hazeh. In English, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and has preserved us and has enabled us to reach this season. Let's drink together the first cup, the Kiddush cup. And now let's turn the page. And now we engage in a tradition called Urchatz, where we wash our hands. Traditionally wash our hands. Now in my home, when I was growing up, it was always the person who was leading the Seder that washed their hands. And so I'm going to uh, wash my hands. And if you're leading your Seder, perhaps you, you can do this as well. And I'll tell you, you can just go to the sink uh, if you need to, or you can uh, uh, have a ritual, uh, a pitcher of water and a bowl. That's fine. And you know, there's something kind of interesting about the um, water, the, the washing, the, the water at the beginning of the Seder by washing our hands. That, you know, in the uh, Brit Hadashah scriptures, we know that Yeshua celebrated Passover. And it's a very interesting place uh, at the beginning of that Seder when the disciples of Yeshua are gathered around a table and he washes their feet. And they can't understand why he's doing that. You know, why is he washing our feet, right? Uh, and so the, the point of washing the hands is ritual cleanliness. We might even say Levitical cleanness being clean uh, before God as the one who leads the Seder, for example. And so rather than Yeshua pointing to himself 
and washing his own hands, he, he cleansed his disciples, so to speak, by washing their feet. So he showed humility and love, indeed, at that Seder by washing his disciples' feet. And that's a very interesting parallel, uh, I think, that we have uh, to our Seder. Well, once the hands are washed, we're ready for the first item on our Seder plate. And the first item on our Seder plate is karpas, uh, or greens, and we use parsley. We take it from our Seder plate and we dip it in salt water. We dip it in salt water. Okay, there we go. All right. And the reason that we use uh, greens and dip it in salt water is that at the beginning of the Seder, we're reminded that we came in small in number to the land of Egypt and we grew to be great in number. And so that reminds us of the green, the greens that uh, they're flourishing, one might say. And we dip the greens in salt water to remind us of the tears that were shed by our ancestors when they became slaves. Also, the parsley has like a wintergreen taste. And it's kind of bitter. It does not fulfill the biblical admonition of eating bitter herbs, but it is a bitter and it reminds us of the greens of our people flourishing in Egypt. And again, we dip it in the salt water to remind us of the tears that were shed by our ancestors. And so in the middle of page five, we have our prayer. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Bore Pri Adama Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. Let us uh, partake together of the parsley, of the karpas dipped in salt water. So go ahead and eat that. And now, on our Seder table, we have this unity, this matzatash uh, unity. And you'll notice that it has a top, it has a middle, and it has a bottom. And we take out the middle piece. We take out the middle piece. And we break it. Break it like so. We put one half just right back here on the, on the matzah bag. And then we wrap one half of it. Now, if you have a special bag for this, uh, for the afikomen, as this is called, now the afikomen, uh, something that pertains to the end, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put our, uh, our afikomen in a little bag that we have specifically made for this purpose. But you can use a napkin. Okay, now this piece of matzah has really some, has new meaning for us. And later on in our Seder, it becomes one of the most important parts, one of the most important parts of our celebration of Passover. But for now, we lay it aside. Okay, and, and I would say at some point, we might want to hide the afikomen because later on, will give the children an opportunity to go and search for the hidden matzah, for the afi komen. Now we lift up the matzah tash, the matzah bag, and we have a, a traditional paragraph that we say uh, about the uh, matzah. This is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. All who are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. Now we are here. Next year may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year may we be free men. You know, the three-tiered matzah bag has a variety of, of meanings. 
Some would say it is a reminder of the the Kohanim, uh, the Levies and Israelites, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, But as Messiah followers, we see this as a reminder to us of the essence of God, the triunity of God, the the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, and, And so it serves as a reminder, and we'll come back to this. Now, the middle matzah reminds us of Yeshua, Therefore, uh, and we know that he was indeed the bread of affliction, that he suffered uh, indeed for our sakes. And we know that in its modern baking, uh, it, it kind of has burn marks like, like stripes and little pierce marks in its modern baking. And it reminds us that he was pierced through for our transgressions and by his stripes we are healed. So that comes from Isaiah chapter 53. And again, it reminds us of the Messiah. And interestingly enough, uh, if if we uh, think of the three-tiered matzahs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the middle matzah would remind us of Isaac, uh, the one who is laid on the altar there. Uh, And, uh, you know, the the one who received the substitution of uh, the the lamb. Behold, the lamb that that came for Isaac, the lamb that died. And Yeshua is indeed the lamb, the Passover lamb uh, that came to take away the sins of the world. So in a lot of ways, we're reminded of Yeshua, our um, Messiah. Uh, But, you know, there's something else uh, about this passage that I think is very important for us. We have a prayer on page seven in our Haggadah. It's a prayer for the afflicted around the world. Uh, And I thought that we could read it uh, uh, together. O God of compassion who hears the cry of the afflicted, hear the cry of the victims, the bereaved, the injured, and all those who live their days in fear. Rouse the hearts of the leaders of the world to put an end to the bloodshed, the violence, the rape, the starvation, the terror that has ravaged and endangered an entire population. Be with those who are working for peace and tending the sick and bringing food to the hungry and shelter to the homeless and hope to those who are close to despair. O God of justice and love, Let us not be indifferent to the cry of the persecuted and the tears of those who have seen their homes, their families, and their communities destroyed. And may their pleas and their plight reach the ears and hearts of those who have it in their power to bring peace to a troubled region and aid to a devastated people. O se shalom bimromav, may you who makes peace in your high places Help us make peace here uh, in this world. Uh, And so what what an important uh, moment for us to to remember the afflicted of the world. And so, you know, one thing we remember about the Messiah is that he suffered on our behalf, that he indeed is the suffering servant. And so right now, Oscar and Shalitha Ortiz uh, are going to sing a song for us called the Sacrifice Lamb, a reminder of the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world.
Thank you, uh, Oscar, and thank you, Shalitha, for that most uh, beautiful, beautiful song. Now we want to continue our Seder on page 8. Manishtana uh, Halayla Hazet, the four questions, uh, answering, uh, a- asking the question, why is this night different from all other nights? So if you have a young person at your table, uh, perhaps you have a young person at your table that has practiced the four questions. Uh, I, I, uh, that would be the time that I hope that they uh, will, will participate. And if not, let's all say them uh, together or sing them together. Manishtana halayla mikol anu Kame tu matza, halayla haze, kulo matza. Shebecho halaylod anu ochin, shaar yirakot, halayla haze, maror. Shebecho halaylod ein anu matbilin, afilu paam echad. Halayla haze, shte fa'amin. Shebecho halaylod anu ochin, bein yoshvin uvein misubin, 
הלילה הזה כולנו מסובים. Now in English, these questions are, first, מה הלילה הזה? Why is this night different from all other nights? And then we have four questions. On all other nights, we eat either bread, leavened bread, or matzah. Why on this night do we only eat matzah? On all other nights, we eat vegetables and herbs of any kind. Why on this night do we eat bitter herbs? On all other nights, we never dip our herbs even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat either sitting up or reclining. On this night, do, why do we recline uh, in, uh, in our chair? Why do we recline in, a, in our position, in our chair? Now, the answer to these questions is uh, the retelling of the story. But just to succinctly answer the questions, we eat unleavened bread, we eat matzah, as the text tells us, because our ancestors did not have time for, to bake bread. They did not have time for bread to rise, so they took unleavened bread uh, and went their way. Uh, probably it also reminds us of a thank offering, of eating unleavened bread uh, uh, for that purpose as well. Uh, the second question, why uh, do we eat bitter herbs? To remind us of the bitterness of slavery. Uh, why do we dip the bitter herbs? Well, as we'll see in a few moments, we dip uh, the uh, bitter herbs twice, once in a uh, salt water, uh, as we have done, uh, and then the second time uh, will be uh, a second dipping uh, into a sweet mixture, and we'll talk about that uh, in a few moments, all of it reminding us of the bitterness of slavery and the sweetness of redemption. And why are we in a reclining position? Uh, because we've been freed from bondage. We do not have to sit at attention. We've been freed. So I will say relax and enjoy your Passover celebration because it is a reminder of our freedom uh, from the bondage of slavery. Now, now we have a very interesting uh, part of our Haggadah right now. We have not yet actually gotten to the place of retelling the story, but we're being reminded about the story, sort of setting the stage for the actual retelling of the story. Uh, and so we have a tradition of, of reading about four different kinds of sons who ask a question about the Passover. Now, the point of these four sons is so that we might realize that no matter who is sitting at our table, we have to be able to explain the outgoing of our people from the land of Egypt so that everybody at the table understands, no matter who they are. And so on page 11, first we start with a contrary son. We read, what is the meaning of this service, he asks. Saying you, he excludes himself. Remember, his question is, what is the meaning of this service to you? Saying you, he excludes himself. And therefore, tell him plainly, because of what the Lord did for me when I came forth from Egypt, I do this. You shall tell him that unless he repents in Yeshua the Messiah, he will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Likewise, it is necessary for each person to have his or her own relationship with God. It is not enough to have a relative or friend who believes in Yeshua, but each person must receive him as a Messiah and atonement. As Yochanan ben Zechariah said, And do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children to Abraham. Now the simple son asks, what is this? To him you shall say, with a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. You shall tell him that the blood of Yeshua has redeemed us. As for the son who does not even know how to ask a question, you must begin for him. 
as it is written in the scriptures? You shall tell your children in that day, This is done because of that which the Lord did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. You shall tell him Yeshua is the Passover lamb. Now perhaps we might have an additional person at our table, someone who is not Jewish. And so a, a non-Jewish friend asks, What does the Passover have to do with me? To him you shall reply, We were redeemed out of Egypt to be a light to the nations. Messiah Yeshua came out of Israel as a light to the nations and the glory of Israel. As the prophet says, I will also make you a light of nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. In Messiah Yeshua, you are fellow heirs and members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Messiah Yeshua through the good news. And now we retell the story. Now, rather than read all of the pages of the Haggadah, now you can do that, we're going to read a couple of different passages from the scriptures. First, we're going to read uh, Deuteronomy, a passage in Deuteronomy chapter 26. Now, this is very interesting because in Deuteronomy chapter 26, you have the passage that is used in the Haggadah that receives a lot of explanation. So if you have a traditional Haggadah, you will see that uh, the thick part of the Haggadah with a, a, a lot of, of verbiage there is actually an explanation of these few verses in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 26. And so we read here that when our ancestors were to uh, enter the land, they were to give a personal testimony of of their journey and of their redemption. And here is the uh, testimony. It's here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 26, beginning in verse 5. You shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down to Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. But there he became a great, mighty, and populous nation. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us and imposed hard labor on us. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction and our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with great terror and with signs and wonders. And he has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Those verses are Israel's testimony. We were few in number. We went down to Egypt. We grew as a people. We were enslaved. It was bitter. It was harsh. We, we cried out to God. God heard our prayer. He rescued us, delivered us out of Egypt, and brought us to this land flowing with milk and honey. That's Israel's testimony. I think it would be a great thing at your Seder to be able to share your testimony of how God has redeemed you from uh, uh, in Messiah Yeshua, from bondage. And maybe you have a particular bondage that he has redeemed you from. You can share that uh, during the Seder. But first we share our corporate, our communal, our communal story. Now there's another passage that we like to read, and that is in Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus 12, where Moses gives the instructions to the Israelites uh, about the Passover. It begins in verse 3 of chapter 12 of Exodus. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them. According to what each man shall eat, you are to divide the lamb. 
Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled at all with water, but rather roasted with fire, both its head and its legs, along with its entrails. And you shall not leave any of it over until morning, but whatever is left of it until morning you shall burn with fire. Now you shall eat it in this manner with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over, and no plague, no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And then in verse 14, it says, Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. You are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we know that our people were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. And we know that uh, they went there as uh, in small in number, grew, but became enslaved. Uh, and we know that they cried out to God and God raised up Moses. Uh, and Moses was told by God that he would be the one who would lead the Jewish people out of Egypt. Moses was told to go to Pharaoh. Uh, and first to say, can we go out into the wilderness for three days uh, and worship our God and come back? And Pharaoh continually said no. And a plague then would come upon the land of Egypt, uh, a plague that would demonstrate that God was more powerful than all of the gods of Egypt uh, and that he is more powerful than the natural order of things and that he is the one and only God. He demonstrated this in the plagues. At the beginning of the plagues, they affected everybody. But toward the end of the 10 plagues, they only affected the Egyptians. Well, finally, after nine plagues, God comes uh, to Moses and says, tell the Jewish people, just as we just read, to take a lamb, keep it for four days, allow the blood to drain out, make sure it's unblemished, uh, take hyssop, Dip the hyssop into the blood, smear the blood across the top and the side of the doorpost, uh, and then gather together uh, and eat the lamb along with bitter herbs and unleavened bread. Uh, and God said, I will pass over all of Egypt. And wherever I see the blood, the firstborn will live. Wherever I don't see the blood, the firstborn will indeed perish. And so we see here the grace and mercy of God upon Israel. The blood of the lamb is the sign. It wasn't because God loved the Jewish people uh, more so that they were uh, better than everybody else or, or that, that, that our people were more worthy than, than other people. No, but God had a calling upon Israel that he still has to this day. Uh, and so uh, back in Egypt, uh, we put the blood on the door, so that would be a sign of faith and trust in God. Uh, and the death passed over, uh, the wrath of God passed over the Jewish people. And the firstborn lived, see? And we could call this, in a way, the good news according to Moses. Uh, because if we update that uh, and and recognize it as, part of the good news of the of the of Yeshua uh, we know that uh, to this day uh, all of us uh, like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way right but 
uh, in Messiah Yeshua, the blood of the lamb is upon us. Imagine back in Egypt, uh, if uh, an Israelite said, you know, I've listened to Moses enough times, uh, and uh, Moses is, has not gotten us out of Egypt. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take the uh, lamb, we'll kill it, we'll roast it, we'll eat it, but we're not going to put the blood on the door. That's just over the top, being a fanatic, not going to do it, right? Then imagine an Egyptian slave master who may have said to himself, you know, this Moses, every time he goes to Pharaoh, there's a plague. I don't know about you, but I'm just going to believe in the God of Moses. I'm going to do what he says. May I suggest to us that there would have been great rejoicing in the home of that Egyptian slave master who put the blood on the door. And there would have been great sadness in that Hebrew slave's uh, uh, life and family by not putting the blood on the door. God is not a respecter of persons. He looks to see who has the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the heart. See? And so that's why we embrace Yeshua, because he's the Messiah of Israel. Uh, as as Messiah followers, we would say that we don't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah in spite of being Jewish. We believe that he's the Messiah because we're Jewish. Uh, and, and the coming of the Messiah is indeed part of Jewish history, part of our history. Uh, and so we desire that all of our people would, would embrace the Messiah, the one who Hashem sent to deliver us from bondage. Do we see it all yet? No, we don't. When the Jewish people kept, came out of Egypt, did they see all of it? No, they did not. Not until they reached the promised land. And that took a long time, many decades later. Uh, and, and so in a way, we're traveling in the wilderness uh, that the Lamb of God has come, uh, has died for our sins and has risen from the dead, given us new life. But indeed, we do live in a, in a wilderness, but we have been redeemed. Uh, indeed, by the blood of the Lamb. And that is really the story of Passover, the story of the Passover back in Egypt, bringing us out of Egypt, and the story of the Lamb of God, Messiah, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Now, in our Haggadah, at this point, we can turn to page 16. Now, if you'd like, you can go back and read all of those sections. But what we've just talked about is uh, really the, uh, the story of the Passover. And I hope that you read along in Deuteronomy and in Exodus. And so now we're going to remember the ten plagues. We're going to dip our finger into our cup and then dab it onto our plate uh, ten times, remembering each plague. First, we'll say the name of the plague in Hebrew. And then we'll say the name of the plague in English. Dam, blood. Svardea, frogs. Kinim, gnats. Arov, flies. Dever, cattle disease. Shechin. Boils. Barad. Hail. Arbe. Locusts. Choshech. Darkness. Makat Bechorot. The slaying of the firstborn. And as we like to say, we have an ancient custom of licking our finger after the remembering the ten plagues. But at this point in our Seder, we also want to remember plagues in this world that continue. Uh, and, uh, and we're always interceding on behalf of the world for, uh, to be delivered. But we know that the true deliverance will come uh, in Messiah Yeshua. Certainly, uh, disease, poverty, environmental destruction, homelessness, domestic violence, War, terrorism, racism, illiteracy, unequal access to justice. And we know that we're going through a plague, one might say right now, uh, of, the, of, of the virus. And we do, we, we do intercede on behalf of this world to indeed be delivered. 
But hopefully we know that our, our true deliverance comes uh, in Messiah uh, Yeshua. The deliverance not only for our own lives, but for the whole world. Yeshua came not just uh, for my individual life or even just for all of mankind, but to deliver the entire world. Uh, and so that is indeed our prayer and indeed our desire. An important part of the Seder is for us to remember uh, those who are vulnerable in this world. Remember, we said a little while ago, all who are hungry, come and eat the Passover with us. All who are, are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. So that is an important part of the Seder. We're, we give thanks for our redemption, but we recognize that there are many peoples in this world who are not uh, redeemed and who have major issues uh, in their lives and in their communities. What do we read in the Torah? Be kind to the, angel, to the stranger and alien, uh, because we were redeemed by God out of Egypt. So how important indeed that is for us. Now we sing a song, and we sing a song of deliverance. It's called Dayenu, it would have been enough. And the idea behind the song is that uh, we remember all the great things that God has done, and we say, but if he had only done one thing, it would have been enough, but he's done much more. And so we remember all of these things. So in our Haggadah, we're going to sing the first couple of verses. In English, the beginning of the song says, Had he brought us out of Egypt and had not judged them, it would have been enough. Had he judged them and not judged their idols, it would have been enough. And it goes on and on. And so we're going to sing uh, the, the beginning of this song in Hebrew. And if you're not familiar with it, you can join in the chorus. The chorus is just Dayenu. Go ahead and say that with me. Dayenu. Okay? All right. And here's how it goes. Ilu hotzi hotzi anu hotzi anu mi mitzrayim v'lewasa behem shifatim dayenu. Day, dayenu. Die, die, anu. Die, die, anu. Die, anu. Die, anu. Die, anu. Die, die, anu. Die, die, anu. Die, die, anu. Die, anu. Die, anu. Ilu asa behem shifatim velo asa be lo hehem die nu die die nu die die nu die die nu die nu die nu die nu die die nu die die nu Dai dayenu dayenu dayenu. All right, very good, very good, very good. Okay, now uh, we want to remember the three elements that every seder must have. Those three elements are found in the twelfth chapter of uh, Exodus, and Rabban Gamliel uh, is the one. Uh, who told us to remember the Pesach lamb, uh, the matzah, uh, and the bitter herbs. And we cannot say that we have observed Passover if we have not remembered these three elements. And so first is the Pesach. We have the bone of a lamb on our table, a shank bone of a lamb. Here it is. We lift it up. Uh, and we say this, the Passover offering, which our forefathers ate in temple times, what was the reason for it? Because the Holy One, blessed be he, spared the lives of our forefathers in Egypt, as it is written. And when your children ask you, what, is, what do you mean by this rite? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, because he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but saved our houses. As it is written, 
He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth. Like a sheep before being led to slaughter, like an ewe dumb before those who shear her, he did not open his mouth. Uh, speaking of Messiah, the Lamb of God. We also have matzah. We have uh, unleavened bread, the matzah uh, that we eat. What is the reason for it? It is because there was not enough time for our ancestors dough to rise when the Holy One, blessed be he, redeemed them, as the scriptures say, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had taken out of Egypt. For it was not leavened since they had been driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provision for themselves. And so we also uh, remember Messiah Yeshua, uh, unleavened, uh, sinless. Leaven in scripture often denotes sin. Uh, and as we said in its modern baking, it has pier modern baking, it has pierce marks and, and like marks like stripes. And we know that he was pierced through for our transgressions. And by his stripes, uh, we are, uh, we are healed. We also read, uh, in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, so that they will look upon me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. And then, of course, we remember the bitter herb. We remember the bitter herb. And for that, we have maror. Uh, we have horseradish. Uh, and, of course, uh, the bitter herb reminds us of uh, the bitterness of slavery. So they set taskmasters so they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. But the more they were oppressed, the more they increased and spread out, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians ruthlessly imposed upon the Israelites the various labors that they made them perform. Ruthlessly, they made life bitter for them with harsh labor at, at, at mortar and bricks and with all sorts of tasks in the field. The bitter herb reminds us of the sorrow, persecution, and sufferings of our people. In every generation, a person is obligated to regard himself as if he had come out of Egypt. As it is said, you shall tell your child on that day, it is because of this, uh, what the Lord did for me when I left, when I left Egypt. Now we raise up our cup and uh, we call it the, the cup of deliverance. Uh, the cup of deliverance. Uh, I will deliver you uh, from their bondage, right? The first cup, Kiddush, reminds us God will take us out of Egypt. He'll separate us. This cup reminds us of the deliverance, the rescue that we have uh, in the Lamb of God and that we are indeed a free people. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech haolam, borei prihi hagafen. Therefore we are bound to thank, praise, laud, glorify, extol, honor, bless, exalt, and reverence him who performed for our fathers and for, and all, for us all these miracles. He brought us from slavery into freedom, from sorrow into joy, from mourning into festivity, from servitude into redemption, let us therefore sing a new song to him. Hallelujah. And so now we're going to read a passage from, Psalm, from the Hallel, from Psalm 113 and Psalm 114. Hallelujah, O servants of the Lord. Give praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Then all together, let the name of the Lord be blessed now and forever. From east to west, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. 
Who is like the Lord our God, enthroned on high? Sees what is below in heaven and on earth. He raises the poor from the dust, lifts the needy from the refuse heap, to set them free with great men of his people. He sets the childless woman among her household as a happy mother of children. Hallelujah. When Israel went forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became his holy one, Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan ran backwards. Mountains skipped like rams. Hills like lambs. What alarmed you, O sea, that you fled? Jordan, that you ran backward. Mountains that you skipped like rams. Hills like sheep. Terrible, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flinty rock into a fountain. We praise God for the redemption he has brought us, redemption from slavery through the death of Egypt's firstborn, redemption from sin through the death of God's Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now that prayer in English, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, Creator, of the fruit of the vine. Amen. We take our second cup, the cup of deliverance. You know, earlier on in our Seder, in the reading of uh, the deliverance, one part uh, I thought uh, we might read right out of the Haggadah goes back to page 12. And I think this is a good place to, to read it. When we're talking about the deliverance, we read on page 12, In the beginning our father served idols, but now the omnipresent one has brought us close to his service. Uh, as it is said, Joshua said to the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Our fathers used to live on the other side of the river. Terach, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. I wanted to read that part because not only have been we redeemed from the bondage to sin, but we have also been redeemed from idolatry. I, in the Passover Seder, as it moves forward, we move from shame to praise. We remember who we were, and now we remember who we are. We were idolaters. We were enslaved. And now we rejoice because we've been freed. And we just took our second cup, the cup of deliverance, remembering that. And so may this be a glorious time of remembering your own deliverance uh, as well. Uh, we were all idolaters. We were all slaves to sin, but in Messiah Yeshua, we have been empowered uh, to stay above the fray. We've been redeemed in our position before God, which leads to being redeemed in the way we live our lives. Now we're going to turn to page 24 in our Haggadah, uh, where we're going to remember Miriam and the great women uh, throughout the generations uh, that have uh, sustained us. Uh, and have given us life. Uh, Miriam uh, is Moses' sister, uh, and there's a story uh, in the Midrash, a, a rabbinic story, a rabbinic lore, uh, that, that Miriam uh, had a well that, that God gave to her that she basically brought all through the wilderness wanderings, and it brought refreshment uh, to the people. And, and uh, she's a prophetess, and we see, we read about her in Exodus chapter 15, singing the song of redemption. Uh, and uh, so we honor her and, and all women at this time. And the way we do that is that on our table, we have a glass. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some water uh, and fill the glass. Now, what, what is a nice tradition is if all the women at your table 
uh, take the pitcher and put some water in a glass, like go around the table and put some water in the glass. In other words, it was Miriam who had the well and sustained the Jewish people. Uh, and so it is women who pour life, you know, Mayim, Mayim Chayim, water of life, pour water into the glass. And so that is a very nice tradition. Uh, and uh, we remember Miriam. We remember all the great women, our, our own mothers, our grandmothers, and some of the great, uh, you know, women of, uh, of Jewish, of Jewish uh, history. And then we can say in the middle of page 24, you abound in blessings, God, creator of the universe, who sustains us with living water. May we, like the children of Israel leaving Egypt, be guarded and matured and kept alive in the wilderness. And may you give us wisdom to understand that the journey itself holds the promise of redemption. And God, we thank you for all of the women, for Miriam, uh, for uh, Deborah, uh, for uh, Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, uh, Elizabeth, uh, others in the, in the Bible who have made a huge difference. Uh, and for all the great women, including uh, our mothers, uh, our grandmothers, uh, and others. And we pray in Messiah's name. Amen. In this uh, page 24, there's another paragraph, and I think it bears reading, and we can all read it together if you'd like. Both Miriam and her well were spiritual oases in the desert, sources of sustenance and healing. Her words of comfort gave the Hebrews the faith and confidence to overcome the hardships of the Exodus. We fill Miriam's cup with water to honor her role in ensuring the survival of the Jewish people. Like Miriam, Jewish women in all generations have been essential for the continuity of our people. As keepers of tradition in the home, women pass down songs and stories, rituals and recipes from mother to daughter, from generation to generation. And that is a great addition uh, to our Seder. Now we come to the place where once again we wash our hands, called rachatz. This is a ritual washing of the hands before we handle the foods, and it is a sign of uh, cleanliness and sanctification, uh, indeed, before God. And we have a prayer. It's on the top of page 25. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kiddishanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Al Netilat Yadayim Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of hands. Now, as we said, there are three things we must do at the Seder. We must eat matzah, uh, lamb, and bitter herbs. And so now we're going to take a piece of matzah, and we're going to fulfill the biblical command of eating unleavened bread. So everyone make sure that you take a piece of matzah, all right, and have it in your hand. You'll need a few different pieces. Hopefully it's accessible to you. And let's say together the prayers on the bottom of page 25. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then we say, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy in his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of matzah. Go ahead and eat some matzah.
Now, we want to take another little piece of matzah, and on your Seder plate, you have maror, bitter herbs. We use horseradish for that. We'll put some on our piece of matzah, remembering the bitterness of slavery. On page 26, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu al achilat maror, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy in his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of bitter herbs. Go ahead and eat the bitter herbs. Now, we come to a very interesting tradition. We take two pieces of matzah, and we're going to make what we what has been called a Hillel sandwich. We put, and I'm going to use a spoon for this, put a little of the maror, the horseradish, on a piece of matzah. And then we have another item on our Seder plate, charosis, charosis. Charosis is a pasty mixture that represents the mortar that our ancestors used to make bricks back in Egypt, but it has a very sweet taste. In fact, I'm even going to take a little bit of the other green. It also represents a bitter herb, chazeret, and I'm going to put it on here, and that is a tradition uh, of eating the bitterness and sweet together. And it reminds us that out of the bitterness of slavery comes the sweetness of redemption. You know, if everything we ever ate in our whole lives was made out of, uh, uh, out of horseradish, we'd never know that it was bitter. But it's only when we come to really taste what is sweet, the redemption, that we understand how bitter it really was. Uh, and so we eat the bitter and the sweet together. Now, just go ahead and eat that. There's no prayer for that, no traditional prayer. Just go right ahead and eat that all together right now. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, so far in our Seder, we have gone through our story. We had our preliminary part of the Seder where we drank our first cup reminding us that we're a separated people unto God. Uh, we washed our hands. We ate uh, our uh, karpas, reminding us that we grew in Egypt. And then we retold the story. Wait, wait, yeah, I had children ask uh, the four questions and remembered the four sons, remembering that we're, we have a legacy of teaching this to our children and our children's children. And then we retold the story remembering the bitterness of slavery, the sweetness of redemption. Uh, and then we, uh, we ate foods that remind us of the bitterness and the sweetness. And we sang songs of praise, including Dayenu. And now we come to the place where we eat our meal. Uh, we eat our meal. And, and it's, uh, uh, the, the meal is not a ritual meal. Uh, but the idea of sharing a meal together with your family in the context of this remembrance and faithfulness and then feeling full has, uh, I hope, a real effect of satisfaction upon us. That by sharing this meal together, it's like a shared experience. And meals in the Bible are very important to us. Uh, and I'm not going to take the time now to go through all of them, but there are many of them, many shared meals that we read about of God sharing meals with people, of people sharing meals together. And in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Revelation, we read about a grand feast at the end when we will all be gathered together with the Lord. Uh, and, uh, and, and so sharing this meal is like tasting that redemption, uh, that satisfaction. But we're not quite finished because after our meal, we continue with our Seder as we remember the cup of redemption and the cup of hope and the afikomen. So enjoy your meal, uh, and we'll continue uh, in just a little bit.
Well, I hope that uh, you're enjoying your meal and perhaps uh, you're you're eating a little bit still. And I, I thought I would mention to you uh, a little bit a little bit about another item on your on our seder plate, and that is the betza, the roasted egg. The roasted egg. Why is there an egg on the seder plate? Well, the egg reminds us of new life, the new life that comes from the the lamb that died, and also just as uh, a hen lays an egg uh, every day, so a sacrifice uh, is needed every day uh, back in ancient times. But it reminds us of new life. And we have the zroa, which we mentioned already. And when you put them together, the bone of the lamb and the egg, it reminds us of what we might say is uh, the, the death of the lamb and the life given to all of Israel. It's like a death and resurrection. And we know that in our Messiah, we have the death and resurrection of Yeshua. The death of Messiah is seen, of course, in the sacrifice, the Passover lamb. The resurrection is seen when the waters of the Red Sea were parted by the mighty hand of God and our people made it onto dry ground on the other side. That was like new life. And our people sang a song. Uh, Az Yashir Moshe, the song of Moses. Uh, and so on our Seder plate, we have the roasted egg. And now some families, if you'd like, if it's a hard boy, if, if it's roasted and boiled, uh, if it's hard, in other words, cooked, I should say, you can crack it and go ahead and eat it. That's just fine. And you can eat all of the horseradish, all the maror, and you can eat all of the uh, haroset, Whatever you'd like to, uh, whatever you'd like to eat, on the seder plate, you can go ahead uh, and eat. Okay, and all the matzah that uh, you would like, certainly uh, eat all the matzah uh, that uh, you would you would like. Well, now that dinner is over, now all the children go and search for the afikomen. So I, uh, I'm going to wait a minute here and, and sing a little song. Right? This is our traditional, uh, our Beth Messiah traditional song at our big Seder uh, that we kind of hum when uh, our children are looking for the Afikomen. So just right now, if you're watching this and you have children, and uh, go up and search for the hidden matzah, and uh, I'll wait just a moment. This is what we kind of uh, sing or hum. I know you're familiar with that song, but that's what we sing at this point in our Seder. Well, I hope that someone has found the Afikomen, and now you have to negotiate to give it back, right? So the Seder cannot end unless the leader of the Seder receives back the Afikomen. So whoever is holding the Afikomen needs to get something in return because it is precious. This Afikomen is indeed precious. And so make your exchange, right? And now the leader of the Seder should have the Afikomen uh, and uh, and we're going to first ask ourselves, what's so important about the Afikomen, right? Well, it came from the unity, as we discussed a, a, a while ago. It came from the unity. Uh, and we said at that time that the unity reminds us of the triunity of God. That means that the middle matzah reminds us of Yeshua. It reminds us of his suffering. Uh, and we broke it. And we wrapped it and we hid it, kind of a reminder of his death and burial. And then one finds it and receives a gift, a picture of the resurrection and new life that we have in the Messiah. Uh, and so it really is a picture of Yeshua. But what's interesting is that the, the meaning of the matzah then changes from the bread of affliction to the bread of life, to the bread of life. Uh, and so now the afikomen is the bread of life. And uh, and what we want to do is remember that uh, Yeshua 
I went just that last dinner that he had, that last Passover Seder. It's also called the, it's also referred to, of course, as the Last Supper, right? But we know that uh, Yeshua took the matzah before he was arrested. He broke it, said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he also says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so we have not had lamb at our Passover Seder. Now, I know that maybe some of you are eating lamb. That's fine. But the I would say the European tradition, the Ashkenazi tradition, is that we don't have lamb uh, at the Passover. Why? Because uh, there is no temple in which to do a sacrifice. And so isn't it an irony that at our Passover Seder, where the centerpiece is the lamb, we don't eat lamb. Perhaps you've had brisket or chicken or something like that. Uh, but this piece of matzah comes to represent the lamb, this piece of matzah. And so we break it and we pass it around the table. So you want to take this piece of matzah. Now, perhaps you've been eating matzah all evening. Now you want to take the, the this matzah that was wrapped up and pass it around the table and everybody grab a piece of it break off a piece of it, okay? Uh, and we remember uh, the lamb back in Egypt, and we remember uh, Messiah Yeshua. And in our Haggadah, on page 29, uh, we have uh, a, a prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam hamotzi lecha min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then we have uh, another prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam hamotzi lecha min hashamayim. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brought forth bread from heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And so as you believe in your heart, you can eat the afikomen. Now we come to the third cup, the cup of redemption. Remember the first cup was Kiddush. I, I will take you out of Egypt. The second cup was the cup of deliverance. I will deliver you from their burdens. The third cup is the cup reminds us of the, the blood of the lamb. I will redeem you. And so it was after they had eaten that Messiah took the cup. Uh, and we know uh, that, uh, that, that he said, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And so we've taken the afikomen, reminding the lamb itself that died. And now we remember the blood of the lamb, which was put on the doorposts and on the side of the door as a sign. And we remember the blood of Messiah, uh, the, the death of Yeshua in his body. And we remember that uh, uh, it is because of his blood that we have life in him. And so we pray for all of us, I pray for all of us, that the blood of Messiah, so to speak, might be on our hearts. And so let us lift up our cup and say the prayer together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melch Olam Borei Peri Hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And let us drink together. Now, we come to the place where someone needs to get up, and, uh, and here I will indeed stand up for just a moment. I'll reach over and opening the door to see if Elijah's there. Well, Elijah's not here. <laughs> uh, and so you should go to the front door of your house uh, to see if Elijah is, is there. Why are we looking for Elijah? Because the scriptures tell us that Elijah is the predecessor of the Messiah. 
that he's going to come and announce that the Messiah is coming. Well, we know in the Brit Chadashah scriptures that Yochanan uh, ben Zechariah, uh, John the Immerser, uh, that he was a type of Elijah, uh, and he was the announcer of Messiah Yeshua. And, uh, and so we uh, uh, recognize that the day will come when maybe Elijah will come again and announce that Messiah is returning. Uh, but uh, year after year, uh, we open the door and we haven't seen Elijah, but we continue to wait with hope. Now on our table, we have a cup for Elijah and a chair for Elijah to come and partake with us. But every year, the cup remains empty, the chair remains untouched uh, because we know that the Messiah has indeed come uh, and we rejoice, but we look forward to the day when Messiah returns. So we lift up our cup and we call it a cup of hope, a cup of hope. And we say once again, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has provided our needs, both physical and spiritual, who has provided us with atonement and abundant life in our Messiah, Yeshua. Uh, and we rejoice. Now, in our Haggadah, there are a variety of other praise psalms that uh, you can say and praise. Uh, we might say this also. The tents of the victorious resound with joyous shouts of deliverance. Open the gates of victory for me that I may enter in and praise the Lord. This is the gateway to the Lord. The victorious shall enter through it. I praise you for you have answered me and I have become my and and you have become my deliverance. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and exult in it. May he who enters be blessed in the name of the Lord. May we bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love is eternal. So this fourth cup that we have taken is a cup of hope, that maybe next year Messiah will be uh, in our midst. And so we can, if we've taken it already, go ahead, but we can drink it all up now. And we know that Passover reminds us, therefore, of the redemption that we have had and the redemption that we will have, of what we've been redeemed from out of bondage, but are looking forward to the promised land. Uh, and, and it is a marvelous thing that we can, you know, that we can experience uh, that uh, today. Now, you know, at the very, very beginning of the Seder, we said that we, that we have to prepare ourselves you know, for uh, sitting down to the Seder table. And we clean out the old leaven. And I like to say this, really, uh, toward the end of the Seder. Uh, and that is, we read in the Brit Hadashah scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, and the context is, is letting sin run rampant and not doing anything about it. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are, in fact, unleavened. For Messiah, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And so may we celebrate Passover, yes, by sitting down to the Seder. But may we celebrate Passover uh, by getting rid of the old leaven in our lives, praying to God, search me and know me, God, and that perhaps uh, you might be able to start over. Notice that this passage says, clean out the old leaven that you might be a new lump, just as you are, in fact, unleavened. If you received Messiah Yeshua in your life, you are, in fact, unleavened. 
but you may not be living that way. Perhaps you're embroiled in sins and things of that nature. Clean out the old leaven. Repent, confess your sins, think about those things, and really live out Passover. And what does it mean to live out Passover? That's what he says here, uh, that we might celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, before we conclude our Seder, we want to sing a song. It's called Chad Gad Yah. Now, you may know it. It's in all of the Haggadot, in your Haggadah that you have in ours. It's on page 35. And instead of one kid, we're going to say Chad Gad Ya. Instead of one kid, one only kid, we're going to say Chad Gad Ya. That's what Chad Gad Ya means, one kid. Kid as in goat, right? Okay. And you'll understand it when the song uh, unfolds. It's about the providence of God. And here's how it goes. And you can sing it right along with me, okay? Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya, that my father bought for two Zuzim. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. And a cat came and devoured the kid that my father bought for to Zuzim. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. And a dog came and bit the cat that devoured the kid that my father bought for to Zuzim. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. And a staff came and smote the dog that beat the cat that devoured the kid that my father bought for two zuzim. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. Then a fire came and burned the staff that smote the dog that beat the cat that devoured the kid that my father bought for to Zuzim, Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. Then the ox came and drank the water that put out the fire that burned the staff that smote the dog that beat the cat that devoured the kid that my father bought for to Zuzim, Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. Then a slaughterer came and slaughtered the ox that drank the water that put out the fire that burned staff that smote the dog that beat the cat that devoured the kid that my father bought for two zuzim chad gad ya chad gad ya. Then the angel of death came and slew the slaughter that slaughtered the that slaughtered the ox that drank the water that put out the fire that burned the staff that smote the dog that beat the cat. Devoured the kid that my father bought for to Zuzim. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. Now deep breath. Then came the Holy One, blessed be he, and he slew the angel of death, who slew the slaughter that slaughtered the ox, that drank the water, that put out the fire, that burned staff, that smote the dog, that bit the cat, that devoured the kid, that my father bought for to Zuzim. Chad God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Very good. Now, you might be wondering, what is that crazy song all about? It's about the providence of God. Chad, God, yeah is a hymn to God's providence. God is evident in the history of mankind. Israel, the kid, is redeemed from Egypt through Moses and Aaron, the two Zuzim. I succumbs to a mightier empire, which in turn is defeated by other empires, until God's rule of justice will ultimately triumph. The cat is Assyria, the dog is Babylon, the staff is Persia, the water is Greece, the ox is Rome, the slaughterer, others, the Muslims, the angel of death, Europe. The Holy One will finally suppress all tyranny, deliver his children from oppression, reestablish the principle of justice, and bring about an era of peace for all nations. And that's our song. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, or allowing me, I should say, perhaps to join you for the celebration of Passover. I hope that it's been a rewarding experience. I hope that maybe it's enhanced your Passover just a little bit. Uh, and please uh, don't forget 
uh, to check us out, Beth Messiah Congregation, uh, uh, BethMessiah.org, visit our Facebook page, uh, or also our Messianic Studies Institute, uh, or MJSI.org for more information. Well, as we finish our Seder, the very last thing we say is a great word of hope. Lishana Haba'a Birushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem. Chag Sameach.